Bloop a doop a doo. Bloop a doop a da ba Hi, I'm Michael and I like all the music. I'm Molly and I made fun of him for liking all the music about <laughs> 10 minutes ago. <laughs> it was a play on like the, I have a crush on every boy. <laughs> I have a crush on every band. <laughs> so we did this last year and it was one of my favorite videos that we did. Just talking about music that we're into that is current. Much better. Bad. You know, if you follow our channel, you know that we mostly talk about retro music and video games and some movies and TV too. But uh, yeah, we, we do like stuff that has been written sometime after we were born as well. <laughs> and before, well before, like uh, 200 years. Yeah, music is really good. It, it's it's good. Especially I like if you're Michael and you have a crush on every band. Okay. okay, so we're gonna structure this like we did last year and talk about music that is actually new in 2023, talk about music that is new to us in 2023, and then talk about music that we are still into. Last year we also talked about the song of the summer, but I actually wanna bring that up real quick. We're not gonna talk about the song of the summer this year because there isn't the monoculture anymore. There kind of isn't the song of the summer anymore. And it's Taylor Swift Speak Now, Taylor's version. We're not gonna put that in the video. So <laughs> no, don't you do <laughs> I am not ready for that vitriol. <laughs> Model actress and their album Dog's Body. Model actress is a queer sort of punk industrial dance band and it's extremely his shit and it's kind of oppressive in how it sounds but I like that a lot it, I don't know I'm super into it so Michael moved apartments recently and I showed up to his his old apartment to help him like with moving and I'm like ready it's like a Saturday morning at like 10 a.m. I show up with donuts and he's playing this industrial <laughs> album. And I was like, oh, is this the energy we're bringing? <laughs> they make some sounds with their guitarists that I just do not understand how they made them. Yeah. Next on my list was Jessie Ware and her oh. new album, That Feels Good. Yeah. We're going to see Jessie Ware in concert soon and I'm so excited for it. I'm gonna dance. Until the pearls fall off. <laughs> <laughs> this album is super fun. I've been a fan of Jessie Ware for a while. Her album before that feels good. I was a little bit disappointed in. Before this, she was sort of like the sort of neo soul singer songwriter mm -hmm. in like an Adele ish vein. And her voice is so good, and it always has been. But then she went to the previous album, which is a dance album, and the music was really fun, but I was a little disappointed in it because it wasn't showcasing her voice as much. And her voice is just so good. But she figured out how to do it in this album because her Girl voice can is. Sing. Her voice is front and center, <sighs> and it is incredible, and I love. Love it. You know, I was saying earlier today, like, I wish we could go dancing more. That is an album that makes me want to be just in the club. Something that I've been listening to this summer that I think every sad girl has been listening <laughs> to this summer is Boy Genius. Their first full length album came out. Just like everybody else, I was obsessed with the EP when it came out. When was that? Like 2018? Something like that. I think this album, I think what's great about it is it really celebrates female friendship. And, in that Eleanor you know, Roosevelt sort of way. <laughs> well, these two female skeletons we uncovered were found <laughs> holding hands and embracing each other. They must have been sisters, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> yeah. They make space for each one to take the lead equally, and they trade that leadership role, and the other two sort of step back and play back up to whoever's in the lead. And nobody stands out more than the others. I think $20 uh, is probably the best track on the album. I am obsessed with it. I love the like crazy asymmetrical meter at the beginning. Molly, you just did a very Molly thing in that once again, you changed your mind and what was your favorite? <laughs> every time <laughs> every time we talk about this album, Molly has a different favorite. Look, they're all my favorite. <laughs> I never cared for Job. <laughs> <laughs> I really love Strong Enough. Part of what I really love about Strong Enough is from what I know of how the song was written. There's a genius video that I'm gonna link in the description where they talk about writing the song, but who wrote what is so fascinating to me. Julian's verse, Phoebe talks about like, I just imagine Julian speeding down a canyon somewhere and almost getting in a wreck. And Julian's like, oh yeah, that's totally me. But when it comes to the moment, the big, huge mm. release that Lucy gets to sing, Phoebe talks about how, oh, when I was writing this part, I knew I wanted to have a night shift moment. Yes. <laughs> Specifically referring to the track Night Shift on Lucy Dacus' album Historian. Is it confirmed from that uh, Genius video that uh, Strong Enough is a direct Sheryl Crow reference? They didn't say that. Are you strong enough to be my man? I'm not strong enough to be your man. Yeah. Like that's, that can't, that can't yeah, be coincidence. It, it cannot be. But I also feel like this whole album has a lot of references to other music. And in the case of the last track, references to their own music, when they go into uh, Me and My Dog at mm -hmm. the end. I had such a moment when that happens. When Phoebe says, I want to be happy. Oh. 
There are other things that sound like references to other songs, like Cool About It. It sounds a lot like The Boxer. (laughs) Yeah. Another one that I am listening to a lot that you actually introduced me to is Kara Jackson, who is this phenomenal singer-songwriter. Apparently she was a U.S. poet laureate. Youth poet laureate. Youth poet. Excuse me. (laughs) She really is a poet who is writing songs and the the lyrics are these gut punches that take you through ordinary things ordinary everyday objects the language is not highfalutin but it is very accessible language it goes into the depths of like feeling of emotion. I don't know how to describe it without you listening to it. I think the track, uh, Why Does the Earth Give Us People to Love is something that like, at a close listen can bring you to tears. It's so heartfelt without being corny, Mm -hmm. without even going close to anything uh, corn adjacent, right? (laughs) It's not even a starch. As far as like poetic songwriters, I mean, I would put her up there with Joni Mitchell. Paul Simon. Bob Dylan, mm-hmm. right? Like, which I sounds hyperbolic, but honestly, yeah, it's, I said it. Real I stand deal. by it's it. Real deal. <laughs> Along with her incredible lyrics, the way all of the instruments work on the album, like she plays guitar and banjo, her playing is just enough. It fills in the spaces between the words, mm. but it's not a show piece of playing, which I think is the right way to do it. But it feels artistic. Yes. Yes. Without being artsy fartsy. Mm -hmm. It feels sophisticated Mm -hmm. without being snobby. Mm -hmm. And then we've got her voice. Yeah. Oh Oh my God. That rich rich. contralto. So gorgeous. And it's just so smooth. Mm -hmm. Watch out for this one. She's really extraordinary. One of the special ones. Last one I just want to mention real quick. Uh, My good friend Megan Enan put out an album called Wordless Lullabies for the Sleepless Volume 2, which has a song on it by me so I'll put a I'll put a link so you can listen to it but it's something I wrote so let's move on so this stuff existed before 2023 but we are just learning about it and why don't you take it away first oh, can we talk about the baths yeah. the beats from New Zealand not new to me because you had been playing them a lot and then I finally put on their album on my own it was basically all I listened to for like the first like three months of this year was just like that album on repeat Mm -hmm. (laughs) and also hey uh, they just got name checked by Barack Obama (laughs) anyway so what are they they're like a pop a pop rock pop punk band their music is really um, upbeat and exciting kind of emo tinged in the lyrics girl fronted which I love Um, I'm sorry, I'm just a girl supremacist. (laughs) Her voice is very earnest. You know, she sings with this sort of flat, not flat as in pitch, but flat as in there's no um, texture or vibrato to her voice. But the overall tone of the voice is so sweet that it, and sort of girlish, that it's really, I think it's fun and it's really accessible. And, um, oh, I hate the word accessible. What's a better word for that? It's easy listening. It's... (laughs) It really grabs you, like, when you first listen to it. And, of course, just singing about anything that we all can relate to. Anxiety, feeling nervous in love, commitment, fears, and stuff. I love the song Knees Deep. I love the title track, Expert in a Dying Field, is great. My favorite track is... Silence is Golden. No, although that is also my favorite track. That's usually what you say is your favorite track. (laughs) No, my current favorite track is... Inai Inai? No, that's your favorite track. Just because it's so fun to sing along with. Yeah. I told you that I was afraid. Yeah. Cover yeah. lyrics, fun tunes, great backup vocals. We're also going to see them in concert soon, and I'm super excited about are Okay, this is how much we love the best. We're going to drive to Baltimore to see this show. And if you're from the D.C. area, you know what that means. <laughs> okay, something that I am late to the train on is De La Soul. So when we did our music in whatever year it was, I think it was 89. Yeah, it was 89. We, we mentioned De La Soul's debut album, Three Feet High and Rising. Ramin gave it such high praise, and I'm like, you know, I've never actually listened to this. The second I put on Three Feet High and Rising, I was like, this is incredible. It's so fun. The samples. Yeah, I went through their entire discography, and it is such a great time. Part of the reason that I'd never really been into them before is their music was not on streaming until very recently. Music YouTuber that I really like, Mike the Snare, did a deep discog dive on De La Soul, and it's really fun to listen to his thoughts on that, so check that out. I'll link it in the description. What a loss in the death of True Going. It's, I think, elite hip-hop. De La Soul and then, you know, the other native tongues 
groups, uh, Tribe Called Quest, uh, Queen Latifah was Native Tongues, um, and a few others. Like, I think that they were doing some of the most exciting hip hop of that generation. I really like how they all just seem like they're friends and they all get guest with each other all the time. I have been listening to a lot of country music. I feel like um, in the summer, especially, uh, I want to listen to acoustic country music. I don't know what it is about like like warm summer days and like sitting on the porch yeah, drinking sweet you, iced tea. You want to sit on the porch with your banjo. Yes! I need to learn how to play the banjo and then I can do that. A couple of artists that I have recently discovered that I'm obsessed with. One is Sierra Farrell who is a country singer, songwriter with just an incredible voice. Reminiscent of Iris Dement, that sort of twangy pointy, but also just sugary sweet. Really great heartfelt songs with like a little bit of bite to them. Mm -hmm. She also has this song that I am obsessed with called Hey Me, Hey Mama, where her voice just does like this incredible thing where she just pushes it all the way up to the edge of where it's about to sort of break into a new register. And this is me talking about technical singer <laughs> stuff, but like, I don't know if, if we have regular watchers, you probably know by now that I'm a singer and I'm obsessed with good singing and what makes good singing, good singing. And, and, and how similar good singing is across <laughs> styles actually. Yeah, yeah, actually. And so like, she just does this thing with her voice where she pushes it up to the edge and just doesn't quite cross over it. And it's so freaking thrilling when she does it. She's one I'm gonna watch out for. And then another country artist that I am majorly obsessed with, and we actually saw him live at a really small venue last week, is this guy, Willie Carlisle, who I think he thinks of himself more in the folk tradition than country tradition. He played this show last week Honestly, and I haven't said this to you, but like I was trying to think what are the best live performances I've ever seen in my life? Like literally ever in my life. And I know I, I exaggerate everything, but like this is serious, okay? <laughs> the best live performances I've ever seen in my life. Christine Gerke and Alan Held in the finale of Valkyrie. Okay, that's opera talk, sorry. <laughs> Lizzo, the second time we saw her. Mm -hmm. Willie Carlisle last week. What those three concerts have in common to me or performances have in common to me is it felt like a religious experience. It felt like this whole mind, body, spirit mm. thing. <laughs> Look up Willie Carlisle. He has this way, something I love about him is the way he just constantly alternates between the ridiculous and the sublime. So he goes from singing about like this completely ridiculous song about living in his van to doing a completely acapella cover of Penny Evans mm -hmm. um, that had the whole room pin drop silent. Yeah. And just completely in the palm of his hand. And as I told several people afterwards, <sighs> I only cried at every other song. Yeah! I definitely cried when he did th this like really bizarre, it's more of a story than a song, a story set to music, Peculiar, Peculiar. Missouri, mm. um, which is the name of his album, uh, his current album. I wept, like mm. just tears streaming down my face. And, and um, the venue was so small that I, and, and we were sitting kind of like up above everyone. Oh. So I'm kind of wondering if Willie was thinking like, who's that big guy who's crying? <laughs> that song? Look him up. I really think he deserves attention. I think he's going to get attention because there's no way uh, he can be kept a secret for very long. Staying on the folk track for a minute, I want to talk about Trevor Beal. So Trevor Beal is new to me in 2023, and I feel like he's new to a lot of people in 2023. He was an English singer-songwriter who recently had some recordings of his discovered in his parents' attic or something mm -hmm. like that that he had recorded there. They were remastered and re-released, and it's just him and his guitar and it's all really really good solid folk music and it sounds very much like the 70s mm. but in in the best way like 70s folk in the best I mean, way it sounds like you know like simon and garfunkel yeah. kind of right which really is the best of 70s folk music i yeah. think it's good stuff check them out if you're into that sort of stuff let's stick with the 70s so i was in a thrift store not that long ago thumbing through some vintage vinyl and i pulled out two country albums and i sort of sent pictures of them to my dad and i said which one of these would you buy they're three bucks a pop he said buy that glenn campbell record the wichita lineman because i have that one and it's really good and so i took it home and i put it on my record player and i started making dinner and the, it started playing and i was like what is this? <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting, but what I got was something akin to the Beach Boys pet sounds, like this very California groovy, 
60s, late 60s kind of sound. I don't quite know how to describe it, but that title track, The Wichita Lineman, is phenomenal. And then the whole album kind of has that same mood to it. And I think it's just super fun, super nostalgic, makes you think of a summertime. I think the whole reason I own vinyl and listen to it is to have something to put on while cooking dinner. It's like cooking dinner music. Okay. <laughs> if you know what that means, then you know what that means. If we go back to talking about Boy Genius, I feel like Boy Genius are like your sort of typical sad girls. But a band that I also want to talk about that I think um, because of Phoebe Bridgers collabing on one of their songs has been getting a lot of attention by the Boy Genius fans is Muna. And they kind of do, it's like sad girls with synths. Yeah. <laughs> their lead singer is so good. And yeah, I mean, I think there was a video circulating of them at Coachella with Phoebe Bridgers where the lead singer is in like a leather bikini. Oh, it's, it's and all, like all of Boy Genius with them. <laughs> right, and like grind on Phoebe Bridgers so like you know what's not to love how many lesbians are you allowed to have on stage I really love the track runners high mm -hmm. I think it's bam, 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 bam. Uh, it is so emotional yeah. in this way that of, of like I'm trying not to be emotional but it's very emotional if you saw my video of my favorite albums of 2022 their album was on my top list I'll repeat what I said about it then one of my favorites on the album is Loose Garment. Mm. Um, you wouldn't think that a band like Muna could do a good slow song, but that one is so good. The lyrics are just arty enough, and she sounds so vulnerable in her singing. It's just so, so pretty. Yeah, and I've also, I've seen them do a couple of acoustic sets, and I really love them in that style of music. I think the lead singer's voice really lends itself well to like a sort of country style music. And so um, if you watch their Tiny Desk concert, that's kind of all acoustic. And I would love to hear them do a whole album like that. Yeah, we need to see them live at some point. So Muna, uh, come to the DC metro area, please. Thank you. So Congotronics International is a super group of bands who play West African dance tradition music and bands from all over the world who were influenced by them. And among the bands who were influenced by them are three bands that I really like. Deerhoof, Juana Molina, and Wild Birds and Peace Drums. And the three of them are so different from each other, but in the same way that you can hear how they could not exist without this African influence. Similarly, in the African influence, I want to talk about Meridian Brothers because I recently got into their 2022 album Meridian Brothers and El Grupo Re Renacimiento. I don't speak Spanish, so please correct me if I pronounced that wrong. Meridian Brothers is a touring band, but they're really just one guy who, on the recordings, plays every instrument and sings all the parts. And El Grupo Renacimiento does not exist. It was made up for this album. So really it's all still just this one guy. They are from Colombia and it's music that sounds like that sort of Latin jazz fusion, but with a heavy Afro-Cuban influence. Mm. But there's also like a heavy shot of mid-century weirdness going on in it. It's such a good clean your house while you're listening to this type of music. Which is different from cooking dinner music. Yeah. It's easier to dance <laughs> while you're cleaning than it is to dance while you're while you're cooking. Try me. <laughs> Knives. <laughs> How many do you have? One. But I could I could add Jimmy E World in my emos because last time it was the Ataris and emo right and we can also talk about Jimmy Eat World from the July 4th concert oh god we went to the local fireworks <laughs> we like fireworks shiny, shiny <laughs> bright loud well there was this cover band right and they were fine they were playing you know hits that are accessible that everybody loves and now I don't mind saying accessible what's funny to me is that um, I feel like you should not be allowed to play British bands on the 4th of July <laughs> and they played like Dave Bowie and Queen right? Dave Bowie <laughs> <laughs> Did I just say Dave Bowie? <laughs> like Dave Matthews? <laughs> then at one point they played Mr. Brightside by The Killers. And of all the songs in the entire set, he starts putting on this ridiculous British accent. In some ways I can understand where he got that idea because the punk sound is putting on a fake British accent. But, but Killers aren't punk. Killers aren't punk and they're from Las Vegas. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, I, we were just like, who's gonna tell him? <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna speed run through many of these. The one that'll be the slowest is probably Courtney Marie Andrews. I believe she was on my 2022 best of list as well. But every time I hear one of her old tracks that I hadn't heard before, I'm like, 
dang, she's good. All of her recordings are still, they're still good, but they're not as magical as her live recordings that you see. Mm. Little Sims, One Life Might Live. Little Sims is a British rapper that I'm really into, and that song in particular is incredible. Check out One Life Might Live. Emmy Lou Harris. We already know that I'm a big Emmy Lou Harris fan. Yeah. <laughs> she has this song, Icy Blue Heart, where she flips into her head voice in just the perfect time and it breaks your heart. Rhiannon Giddens and. Oh, Rhiannon Giddens! And, and Francesco Teresi, their version of Little Margaret, which is an old folk song, but this one's really good because it's got this like intense drum part to it. It's She's really so fun. smart. Pulitzer Prize winner. Pulitzer Rhiannon Prize Giddens. winner Rhiannon Giddens. Yeah. Look it up. She's incredible. I recently got back into my favorite Janet Jackson song, Together Again. Oh, your other girlfriend. Yeah. One Actually, of, that is her best song, it's Together best. Again. Oh my yeah. gosh, it's so good. I want to listen to that right now. Like, when we, yeah, when we finish filming yeah. it, we got to put it on the video. We'll do it. it. We'll do it. R.E.M. Radio Free Europe. <gasps> I love that song. That song is so fun. And it's one that I didn't know before I did my deep dive of R.E.M. But Radio Free Europe is one of those songs that really showcases how incredible Mike and Michael's voices are. Mm -hmm. Their voices are actually quite similar. Similar. And we, we're used to hearing Michael Stipe singing lead on everything, but then Mike, who's also the guitarist, he plays the Rickenbacker, is what my dad always says. He's also got a great voice that is quite similar to Michael Stipe's. And what, that's what makes the genius of R.E.M. Yeah, so good. Classic. Roberta Flack killing me softly with his song. Oh, great um, song. People always talk about, well, like, oh, the Fuji's cover is so much better. It's like, no, 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 no. We don't need to put qual we don't need to put qualifiers on this. They're both incredible. I love the feel of Roberta's performance in it. It's like. She's actually having her heart broken while she's singing this, and she's hold, trying to hold on. I recently came to the decision that my favorite Prince song is I Would Die For You. What's the one that starts with We Are Gathered Here? Too. Dearly Beloved, um, yeah, Let's celebrate. Go Crazy. That yeah, one is incredible, that's a good too. One. Part of what I love about Prince is that how all of his musical ideas were so simple, actually. It's just the way he mm. layers them and combines them to make this viscerally engaging. <laughs> well, it's also like the princeness of it all, right? Yeah. The sort of sexual energy that he brings to everything. Mm -hmm. You know, you, it's irresistible. Right. The drums, Saddest Summer. I oh, always, fun. I always want to listen to it in the summer. It's a song about summer and being summer being sad. Mm. See, I've been really <laughs> lately into Taylor Swift's Cruel Summer. I know that song, but whenever I hear Cruel Summer, I think of It's a Cruel Crew, crew, summer, which was mm -hmm. Bananarama, I think. No, I just like the way she says crew, summer, like that, <laughs> um, -er. yeah. And, I think and then, like, that weird, like, noodly thing that her voice does at the top. <laughs> 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 Why was that so funny? Was that that funny? It was pretty funny. I'm fucking hilarious. Okay. Parquet courts almost had to start a fight in and out of patience. That's not total football. No, I, I also love total football, but the one that got me hooked on them is almost had to start a fight. Some of the best bass lines in, oh, in, that, in that, punk. Well, see, that's the total football. Look up parquet courts if you're in, into that sort of stuff. Sam Amadon, who uh, is always incredible, but he has a version of old folk song, How Come That Blood? And it's one of those things that is like unsettling, but it's kind of a groove. Sydney Gish. Oh, yes. Sin Triangle, especially. I want more Sydney Gish. Two-Faced Bitches never lie, and therefore I never lie. I don't have as many things on my list, mostly because for the last six months, I've basically been exclusively listening to the Beths and Willie Carlisle. <laughs> you know, I have an obsessive nature. I can't help it. That's why I shouldn't drink as much as I do. And if I do a thing, I'm doing it a lot. But I have been, um, in my sort of bluegrass vein, I have been listening to Sturgill Simpson's bluegrass album, Cut in the Grass, which... I love, I particularly love the track, Just Let Go. Last year when we did this video, I talked about having sort of an emo revival and uh, I still am feeling a little bit of my like emo nostalgia. And I've been listening to a lot of Jimmy Eat World. Their album Clarity, which was kind of before they really got a lot of mainstream radio play. Before the middle is, yeah, before the middle, is so good. I can't remember who I heard use the term for like Midwest emo of like twinkle core. <laughs> <laughs> but it has uh, some some tracks that are like very much like that and I love it. I also was having like a dashboard confessional moment because right. it just makes me feel like a teenager experiencing love for the first time. I think what I love about that kind of emo music is the like extremely 10th grade creative writing project, <laughs> like yeah. quality of the lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love how unapologetic they are about that. We have a long list of music for you to listen to. Mm -hmm. Write us a report. Molly will grade it with a sticker. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna go sit on the porch and drink 
uh, sweet tea while playing our banjos. Yeah, that's it for this one. Give this video a like if you liked it. Give it a pity like if you didn't like it. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. We put out reviews of mostly music and video games, but some other stuff here and there, there. We do mostly retro stuff. We're making our way through the early 90s. It's a whole thing. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff from the 90s because that's when we were 5 to 15. So. Watch out, because like <laughs> eventually we're going to get to 1996, the greatest year of music in my lifetime. <laughs> to this side over here, there's a video that YouTube thinks you might like. Up there's the button if you want to subscribe to us. And uh, yeah, maintain your groovy selves. See you all next time. Bye -bye.